So you've done it. You've reached the last video in the Linux Essentials course. And the really cool part is we get to finish with two super neat things. We're going to cover symbolic linking, and we're also going to cover the sticky bit, which is fun to talk about, but it's also very useful on the command line. Now, there's more in-depth stuff that we could do, but we're just going to cover those two to finish off this series because, again, this is Linux Essentials. For more in-depth training, you know, stay tuned to the channel. We'll cover other things later. But let's get right to the command line because symbolic linking is something you're going to use all the time. So I'm here in our working folder that we've been using all along. And if we look, we have a couple things. We have a file called pickle and a folder called stuff. If we look in the stuff folder, you see that there is a single file called thing one. Now what a symbolic link is here. Let's do a ls minus l okay what a symbolic link will do is it will create like a pointer to another thing so if we do ln dash s for symbolic and then the thing we want to link to so let's link to stuff and then what we want to call the symbolic link which i'm going to call same stuff okay and now if we do ls minus l we're going to see that we have a new Thing. I don't want to call it a file because it's not really a file. So the first thing to notice is remember our first field here that says what type of thing this is that we're looking at. For example, pickle is a file. So it just has the dash. Uh, the stuff is a folder or a directory. So it has a D. And now this new type that we have is an L and it's a symbolic link. And the cool thing is when you do LS minus L, it actually shows you what it's pointing to. It says there's this symbolic link called same stuff and it's pointing to a folder called stuff. And this works just like the folder does. So if we do LS what's inside stuff, remember there's a thing called thing one. If we do LS same stuff, Look at that. It's the same exact thing. Now, what if we were to rename? So we're going to move stuff thing one to stuff thing two. Okay. So now if we look in our stuff folder, there's thing two. If we look in same stuff folder, well, look at that. It's thing two because it's pointing to the folder, right? It's not a new folder. It's just another way to address that same folder. Now, one of the things that you can do is let's say you have a folder that is very in depth, like, I don't know, uh, user share doc, uh, vim tiny, and you don't want to type that every time you could make a symbolic link to something just called uh, VT for Vim tiny, if you want. And then you would be able to reference that new symbolic link, which would point to the entire uh, location of the folder that you're talking about. Now we can do this with folders, but we could also do this with a file. All right. So let me clear the screen. LS minus L. See, we have a file in here called pickle, right? So let's do LN dash S. The source is pickle and our symbolic link is going to be called same pickle. Okay. So if we do LS minus L, we're going to see sure enough. Now, same pickle is pointing to that file called pickle. Okay. So we can tell that it's pointing to the same file because if we were to say echo the word juice and we're going to echo that into the file called pickle, and then we look inside pickle. Well, there's juice, right? We, we've catted the pickle file and inside there is juice. But if we cat same pickle, haha, look at that juice. Now, what if we were to say echo new juice into same pickle, and then we were to cat pickle, we're going to see new juice because we put new juice into the symbolic link that is pointing to the original file. So it's just a way to reference the original file. And if we look LS minus L, look at that. We have those two symbolic links. And the thing to note that pickle is nine bytes long. Same pickle is only six bytes long. But what if we were to say echo something really big into pickle and then do LS minus L? Well, now pickle has grown to 93 bytes, but look, same pickle is still only six bytes because a symbolic link doesn't actually take up a lot of room on the hard drive. All it is, is a reference to the other file, but there is a scary thing that can happen. What if we were to do this? RM pickle. Now we have a broken link and it, it warns you here. This nice bash command line here uh, warns us. It turns it bright red and it says, whoa, something's wrong. Same pickle is pointing to a file called pickle. 
but there's no file called pickle on our system. And now if we try to uh, cat same pickle, there's no such file or directory because remember, it's just pointing to a file. So it does not give you a copy and it does not give you like a safety net or anything. If you delete the original file, a symbolic link is going to be pointless because it's just pointing to something that isn't there. Now, sticky bits are not directly related to symbolic linking at all. They're just in this same video because they're lumped together by the Linux Essentials objectives. But the idea behind a sticky bit is, let's say you have a common shared folder on your system. For example, the temp directory on your system. You want anybody and everybody, whether it's a regular user or a system user, to be able to put files into the temp folder and not worry that someone else is going to delete them. Because if a folder is writable to everybody, anybody can delete what's in there. So what the sticky bit does is it adds a little bit extra, it's actually literally called special permissions to the folder so that only root or the owner of the file can rename the file or delete the file if you write it into a, if you save it into a directory that has the sticky bit turned on. Now I'll show you how it works, but that's the concept and that's why sticky bit exists. It's just so that somebody else can't either maliciously or accidentally remove your files that you're storing in a shared common folder. Now here on our Linux system, if we go into the temp folder and we do LS dash L a, uh, we're going to see looks like there are a bunch of things stored in here and these are stored almost all by system files or, or by system users or by the root user it looks like i actually have a couple in there too s powers uh it's like an ssh session has stored a temporary file in here right what i want to pay attention to though is look at the dot right the current folder the folder forward slash tmp look at this directory permission right read write execute read write execute read write t now that shouldn't look right. <laughs> We've only learned read, write and execute. But what happens is if you add the sticky bit to a folder, it is signified by having a T right there. And then, like I said, only root or the owner is able to delete or rename files that are placed there. So anybody can write stuff in here, but you can't hurt somebody else's file. Now, in order to actually create a sticky bit on a folder, you use the same tools that we use to do any other permission. So let's actually go back to our folder, go back into our working folder. So in here, let's look and we have our folder called stuff. Now, this is a folder that has a certain string of permissions here. Let's actually change this so everybody could read to it and write to it. So chmod 777 stuff. All right, and now ls minus l is going to show us, sure enough, read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. If we wanted to turn on the sticky bit for the folder, we would do chmod. We would do it one of two ways. We would either say chmod plus t for sticky bit on the stuff folder. If we do that, look, we have that t just like the temp folder has. Let's get rid of it by saying chmod minus t stuff. And there it's back to how it was before, right? With just the, the regular executable bit. But we could also do this with octal notation. Now that's what we used up here. We use schmod777 on stuff to make it read, write, execute for all of them. However, there's an implied field before the three numbers. And if you don't put that first number, it, it's implied to be zero, meaning I don't want you to set any special permissions. However, if we were to do chmod 1777 on stuff, now if we look at it, that T is set because that initial field, like I said, if it's a zero, meaning like don't do anything to the special bit, it you just don't have to put it. We could say chmod, we could put it there, 0777 stuff, and that will remove the sticky bit because see now it's there. If you don't put the zero though, it just assumes that it's there. If you want to set the sticky bit, you have to put a one there so that you can actually use four numbers when you're using schmod on a folder. Another thing to note, uh, there is, it doesn't make any sense to apply a sticky bit to a file. Now you actually could, you could apply, you know, plus T on a file and it would show up there, but it doesn't do 
anything. There's no effect whatsoever if you put a sticky bit on a file. Now, it used to be way back when in Unix that if you added the sticky bit to an executable file, what it would do is when you ran the executable, because again, this is on the executable field, right? When you ran the executable, it would store the program in swap space. So the next time you executed it, it would start quicker. But we are not at that phase in Linux or Unix anymore. So right now, if you put a sticky bit on a file, it doesn't do a darn thing. It just has zero effect whatsoever. Okay, so it's only a folder thing that you do. And you either do it, like I said, in the temp folder or var temp, or we're actually gonna have a little game that we're gonna play with Bob and Susie on a folder that we have already created. Let me show you. So let's minimize this. And if we look, I have two folders and this is already set up. I've created a folder called sandbox, okay? Notice here, I'm Bob in this window, and over here, I'm Susie in this window. All right, so if we do LS minus L, we have two different folders. One is called Danger, and one is called TMP. Notice that Danger does not have the sticky bit set, and TMP does have the sticky bit set, all right? So first thing, let's see how it works if we go into the Danger folder. All right, so I'm in here, there's nothing in there right now, but I, as Bob, I'm going to touch a file called mine all right so it's there it's called mine it's owned by bob in the sandbox danger folder so now susie logged in over here she's going to go into the danger folder she's going to say oh it looks like bob created a file well he says it's his i'm going to say move mine to susie's file and now look at that it's now it's called susie's file because the sticky bit did not protect it we look it's still owned by bob but susie made the change to it all right so over here it's we're in the same folder so sure enough now it's called susie's file but let's go out of the danger folder and into the temp folder now there's nothing in here but remember if we look up here this does have the sticky bit set okay so if bob creates a file in here called stop as a message to susie we do ls minus l we're going to see now there's a file called stop in the temp folder and look the permission string is actually exactly the same as the one up here when he created a file called mine but now if susie goes back and then she goes into the temp file and she goes ls minus l oh bob you want me to stop huh well what if we just rm stop it says do you want to remove the right protected file yes oh you can't operation is not permitted she's like fine then i'll move it move stop to go and it'll say you can't move stop to go because the operation is not permitted and if we look the file is just like bob left it it's called stop now this isn't always about malicious users on your system trying to you know remove each other's files but the sticky bit especially on a folder like the temp folder on a system means that only that user the owner or root is able to remove or change the name of the file and that's just how the sticky bit works that's why it works and now you understand not only what it is, what it does, but how to change the sticky bit in two different ways. So you're awesome. And with that, I'll just say, please learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I hope that you enjoyed this whole series and stick around. We're going to do a lot more. Please leave comments. What other things would you like to learn about Linux or IT or anything in general, really. I just love talking about stuff and teaching stuff. So let me know in the comments what I should cover next, regardless of when you're watching this video. I'll see you next time. Thanks for sticking along. And I, uh, I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I have.